Hello, welcome back to r and Architects. I'm your host, Robbie. And today we're talking about something important in game design that a lot of you guys maybe didn't think about until now. And that is player feedback. The way that we experience things, the way that we feel them, right? When we talk about feeling in design, a lot of times we'll talk about lighting and, and effects and things that we can see. And there's particle systems and fog and sound design and all these sort of things. But CB2, can also be super helpful in giving player feedback. There is a way that I use a lot in my rooms to just give it a little bit of that extra spice. When you, for example, try to put an invisible collision, you have a wall, you delimit your map. You don't want people to go further than this one spot, right? A lot of people will just put an invisible collision in there and then you just walk into it and, and can't go through it. But if you think about other games that you perhaps play, sometimes these walls, especially ones that they want to make it clear that you can't go through, right? But it isn't like a wall like this one where you just maybe know that you can't. So, well, this one you, you can't go through. But other ones, a wall, you just crash into it. This one will little pushback, a little bounce back effect. That's how I like how, how I like to call it the bumpy. I know, I know that's not probably like the correct term, but I call it my bumpy circuits. So today, c come over here. I'm gonna teach you guys how to super quickly implement this bumpy effect on all your invisible collisions and have a better feel for any kind of room that you might be working on. Let's go. Behind me right here is that invisible wall that was pushing me back, giving me that feedback effect. So now let's try to understand how that works, all right? Let's go. We're gonna begin as usual with our 30 Hertz. Why do we use the 30 Hertz on this one? Because we want it to be constantly running all the time. But the way that it doesn't run all the time, as before, is with a conditional. So that's gonna be our if something, then do that, else do that other thing, right? Our condition this time is a raycast. A raycast is a really funny thing. You have to imagine, basically, when you have your head and you're looking at something, think about you have a laser pointer coming straight from the middle of your eyes and just pointing forward, right? That's what basically what a raycast is. And we can determine the length of it, so if it will detect something really far or not really far, and many kinds of settings. So let's get through those in a real simple way. Here we have our start position, right? Start position is going to be plugged into the get position of our local player. There's two chips nowadays for getting the position. There's one specifically for the player's head, and then there's this one. This one gives the position of the player's body. And the reason why I use this one is because I want to push back when the body gets close and not when the head gets close, because people tend to lean a little bit, especially when they're on VR. So anyway, that's the start of a raycast. So our laser pointer is shooting straight from the middle of your chest this, this occasion. And then we have a direction, right? So where is this really pointing at? Well, usually, like I said, it would point forwards, but this time we're going to have a couple vector things here and we're going to grab this from the local player, just as we did the position, we're going to get the player's velocity. The velocity, we're going to split it into a vector, so X, Y, Z coordinates. Why are we doing this? Well, the velocity, even if you don't think about it, is basically a vector. A vector is the start point, the f end of a point, and then the direction of that point, right? But the velocity, when we're playing in real time, which would be the fourth dimension, would tell us yeah, okay, it's moving that fast, but like which way in, you know, in 3D is that thing actually moving? Now, the way we figure out like a, a way to use that in our in a raycast is by splitting it, but then not using the Y. Because if you remember on previous examples, the Y determines the height of, of somebody or something in the room. Right, but in this case, I'm just concerned about the position in a horizontal plane, right? So, like, I want you to bump into the wall in a horizontal plane without being able to push like upper or lower or something, right? So, we're gonna split it, then we're gonna reform this vector again, we're gonna recreate it, but we're gonna have a y of zero, 
so it's not going to affect our height our y axis you know so that's going to be our direction that's where it's shooting at the way we're moving so even if you're looking to the front but you're moving backwards that's going to be your direction backwards right it's not going to be determined by your head there's a chip called get camera forward that's exactly your head pointing on something we don't want that all right and then the max distance this is important we just want the 0.6 we want it to be super short a little bit over half a meter i think that's a sweet spot trust me on that one and then when this ray cast, when this little laser pointer that's pointing out the middle of your chest by 0.6 meters right depending on where you're moving hits then it will go through all right but now we have another conditional because that hit might go through a lot but we want a couple of things here so we're gonna use our equals chip and we're gonna look for three truths this time true 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 we'll make this fire make conditional go forward all right so three things we need over here the first one we have an is valid and a hashtag those two are coming out of our raycast because our raycast gives us more information not only the hit you can tell if you're looking at a player and an object you can tell the distance of the player of the object the hit position which would be another vector and the surface normal all right well from this we want to detect an object we want to know if our laser pointer thingy is hitting an object we want to know if it's valid important check just because sometimes non-valid things will will start triggering stuff and then we want to know if it has a tag and this is why i call my circuits the bumpy effect because this tag that i put is bumpy right so basically what i've done is on, on these collisions, invisible collisions that I have, that I want to have that pushback effect, bounce back effect, I put a tag on them called bumpy. That way, if you have other collisions that you're using for some other thing, for example, you have something very detailed, so you have it on decoration and you wanna put a couple, you know, invisible collisions on there, but you don't want those to push you back because, you know, they're normal walls or something, then you don't put the bumpy tag on them, all right? So we're checking to see if the collision, or anyway, the object has the tag. And since the only objects that have the tag are the collisions that I put the tag on, you know, those are gonna be the one that works over there. Then we have another thing over here. This one goes down to room owner. Ideally, I, I unplugged it here so that I would get the effect myself, but let me correct that. We want to have this result into a knot and then the knot into the result. And I'll, I'll tell you why just in a moment. This comes from the get local player, right? So then we have this chip player get this room owner. I am a room owner because this is my room. I'm working on it. This is a, a new room that's going to come out soon. And it will be a true, right? Well, I don't want to push me back and other people not. What I want is to push other people back. So like if you see now, for example, I can walk into the collision. If I want to, it doesn't push me back anymore. Right? It doesn't give me the effect. So then if I disable it for certain tags and give myself a tag for being a room owner in Rooms 2.0 or a role in, in normal Rooms 1.0 version, then I would be able to walk through it, which is what I do most of the times. This time, it doesn't really matter. There's nothing back there I want to go to, so it's fine if it's activated all the time. But here, the room owner, for most people that aren't me, is going to be a false, right? So we're going to turn that into a not, and that's going to make it a true. The not just does that, you know, if it's a false, it turns it into a true. If it's a true, it turns it into a false. I want it to affect everybody that isn't a room owner, which would already be fine because it's a false, they're not. But the reason why we turn it into a true is because we want all of this to be true. We want the collision to be valid, we want the collision or the object rather to have the tag, and we want the person to not be a room owner. And having all those be true, then we have our second conditional. And when that happens, when all of these are true, then we show a player a subtitle. If you've seen, when I showed you before we started explaining this, 
you told me a little text I can show you right here with my maker pen if I hover over my the, the, the text here it says it's dangerous to go alone Jun. turn back that's a little play on Zelda if you've ever played some of the original Zeldas it's dangerous to go alone and then you know he gets his first sword so and then we have a little message you can change that to whatever you want I have it just in three seconds subtitle simple enough you can take that out you can bypass it you can do a notification I don't know you can do many things you can even play a sound you can do here play sound and it will give you a little sound, which will amplify that 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 feedback that you get, you know. But since this is not like a some sort of special wall, maybe if you had some wall that was, you know, made of slime or something, and whenever you pushed into it, it will give you like a little bouncy sound. That would be cool. But for this occasion here, I, I don't really need that. So, all right. Here you can, like I said, put whatever you want or not have anything you want. And then we have this. Velocity set. Why are we not doing velocity add? Well, because velocity set sets it immediately. It doesn't add to the velocity that you already have. It will immediately set your velocity to whatever we're telling it to, right? So then we have a target. The target is going to be plugged all the way in the beginning to our local player, right? And then... All right. Sorry for that. I just fell right there in the water and it respawned me. But we're back so <laughs> we have the target all the way over there with the local player we have our velocity multiplier of five all right that's a little it's not too bad it's not enough to feel that you're not getting pushed like enormous amounts like to feel like a bouncy wall but it's not too little that you're not gonna notice even on screen mode and then we have the velocity so this is multiplier we have the velocity that we are going to grab from the surface normal. What does that mean? It basically means that at whatever kind of speed that you were, you know, trying to go into the wall, it's going to give you that feedback that is going to be almost there to the velocity that you had before. So if you think about, if you're going super slow, you're going to get pushed slow. If you're going super fast, you're going to get pushed fast or faster, rather, right? Because we have the multiplier as well. And it's going to push you because of the surface normal into that um, opposite direction of where you were basically going at. So the velocity is going to be grabbed from a Reka. So if you see the heart of this whole thing is the Reka itself here. We have a conditional of a hit, we have a conditional of a couple things that we're checking, so this goes through. We have a couple more feedback for the player, so a subtitle or a sound, something you want. And then we have the actual effect, which would be the velocity set, right? And this all stems from here. So I'm gonna publish this as a free invention again, put it on the shop. If you haven't joined Random Architects Club and we have events every Thursday. Join us, check us out. We do a lot of cool stuff, hopefully for you in the game. And I'll try to teach you guys more, but this one's gonna be a free invention. I'll put it on the shop, send an announcement to the club. So join the club, check it out. You can get it for free, put it in your rooms, modify it, do whatever you want with it, learn from it, hopefully. And again, thank you for watching my videos. And I got this fancy red cape that I'm wearing. You probably can't see it, but I'm wearing it at least today. So I'm, I'm really happy. And that, yeah, I don't know. Please subscribe. You help me out a ton more than you think. Check out over here on the left side, uh, my Ko-Fi page where you can support me if you like my rooms, if you like what I do, if you like my videos, please check it out. There's also a fun bunch of free stuff over there that I publish every other day and leave a comment I appreciate you just drop whatever you want to learn next if you have any ideas or any questions you know join our discord as well and yeah I guess that's it for today ciao Robbie out